all there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I remember finding out years later that like that was a big that us being in that house that like people were talking about that as like like we were some sort of thing that was like separate. And I never felt really? that in that house. Yeah, I remember hearing about like <laughs> I don't know, like the frat house, like the shit they would say that like it was just like what are you talking about? I didn't even understand. That I thought we were goofing around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just but, naive. Like three years later, getting my feelings hurt. Like, wait, you said that about that? <laughs> we were nice. <laughs> I saw you laughing at all those jokes out there when we all tell we all laughed at each other's jokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing like like I've described Philly comedy to other people and they're like, comedy sucks, but that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you tell a joke, watch someone like lose their shit laughing, and then read later in a Facebook post that you were actually bad. <laughs> yeah, the last the last couple of years yeah, after the Trump thing happened. That mm -hmm. was weird. But you know, we go. <sighs> well, now comedy's illegal to do, and I couldn't be more thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have thought of this. Like, like you, you've put years in and stuff. Like, if comedy ever comes back, there's only a certain amount of people who've like done it for a long time. You well, know? yeah, it'll like, be if it comes back, it'll be like the the only thing that's different is nobody got paid during the second comedy boom of like the tens. People definitely won't get paid if it comes back. I don't even know where you mm -hmm. can do it, but because it'll be what happened in the nineties. In the eighties, there was too much comedy. A lot of it sucked. It died. Only the cream of the crop was left, but it was more lucrative and there were more avenues to do it. I mean, I think the avenues to mm -hmm. do it just straight up are not going to exist. Well, at least post -COVID. Like, like in the 80s, it was like the demand for comedy is so high that that the like the people who were good were working and everybody else was working with this comedy boom. It's like there's more opportunities than ever. And we're only going to take like this particular circle of not particularly funny people. I also give think, it all to them. I also think that live comedy just means less to younger generations. I think that like clear, like overwhelmingly people are consuming their, like people on TikTok are doing shit that like you would do on stage once upon a time. They're doing characters, they're doing fucking act outs, they're making observations. But the way that kids consume that is, is TikTok now or Vine or whatever, the, whatever, even mm -hmm. when TikTok goes away, there'll be another app that replaces it. I've also noticed like for some reason, online word economy bombs and jokes do way better if they're like written badly yeah i don't know like how many viral yeah. tweets are are like they use all 240 characters it's like a complete mess the punchline's in the middle yeah yeah yeah, yeah and i'm I, I honestly i chalk that up to just being old like i feel like i'm too old for twitter <laughs> just like <laughs> really? i don't get it you guys have a bunch of emojis and there's, there's like eight thousand likes all right well whatever <clears throat> your tweets make me laugh though <laughs> Ah, that's all right. I try to use punctuation. Like if I fuck up punctuation, it's because I fucked up punctuation. Like mm -hmm. I try to like play it straight. So if I ever like misspell someone's like, ah, that Yo, was me. Do you know how commas work? Because I'm just like, I, I'm confident. I act confident with commas, but I genuinely have no idea where to put them. I still. think I'm actually somehow more confident with semicolons than commas. No, I've thought about this. I went through like I had like an hour and a half in the middle of the night where I was convinced I was going to learn Russian. And then I realized, <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I was panicking. I was like, "You got to be valuable in some way, dude. You got to fucking figure something out. You got to learn <laughs> Russian." And then I realized I don't know English. <laughs> they, were <trying> to, <laughs> they were trying to explain like, "Well, this it's it's super like Russian's like the Russian's like the fifth hardest language to learn." Somehow and you're speaking. What, you, you, I mean, you're speaking Russian with a Philly accent somehow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, but all those thoughts went through my mind of like, how fucking funny would it be if you could just go straight into Russian? You know, those fantasies. And then like 90 minutes later, I'm like, yeah, I suck. I don't. No way. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like crushing the club circuit in Russia. <laughs> yeah. I knew a like, dude, um, uh, Steve Sudia, funny guy, um, but he he was like a, a central PA open micer, and then he joined the Peace Corps and went to Moldova. He was there for like four years, and I guess two years into it, he got bored and started doing comedy again. And uh, I was like, what the, like, what is the comedy scene there? And he's like, yeah, I'm like one of the top comedians in Moldova because there's like 25 of them. Holy shit. Oh my God. He was like on TV. <laughs> he was like, oh I was like, God. were you, he was like, I was like, were you playing theaters? He's like, yeah, I played both theaters in Moldova. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like his, uh, <laughs> his like enlistment ran out and he had to come back. And he's just like, <laughs> damn, dude. That yeah. sounds incredible. If I could learn fluent Spanish, dude, and you just go to Costa Rica, and be a stand up comic in Costa Rica. Dude, in Mexico. I mean, if I, if I moved to like Central America to do comedy, 
I would quickly just be like a man in a fishing village. I would, yeah. I would lose sight of my goal pretty quick. Well, in Mexico, they uh, like Comedy Central Mexico. They literally film people doing street jokes. That's true. Man. That's not mm-hmm. like just made up like that. It be because it's interesting how like comedy progresses differently for different cultures. Which is like, it's weird. You get into like weird territory with that. Like, I'm not like trying to like talk down about like other cultures, but like comedy is like when you look at like these French comics, you get really like that Gad guy or whatever. Like, his comedy is really popular in France, but it feels like a decade behind where we are mm-hmm. just in terms of like what he's doing on stage. Same with like, like I feel like the UK just caught up because it was only like five years ago that they started, uh, they started being like everybody's got to do their own material. Yeah. Like, well into the 2000s, it was, like, uh, Catskill style, where it's like, hey, are you doing this bit tonight? Uh, yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that about uh, UK stand-up, because, like, they're, they have Monty Python. Like, they're one of, like, the sketch Mount Rushmore, like, UK Monty Python shit, like, set the mm-hmm. bar, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I mean, they, a lot of their, like, sketch and TV comedy is so fucking good, and their stuff, like, like, I think you would, like, look up Chris Morris, the show's Jam and Brass Eye. Oh, Jam is awesome. You showed me Jam one night, yeah, yeah. and I watched the whole thing. They're my they're my favorite. It's so fucking weird, and, like, the, it, it was, like, publicly funded. It aired on, like, their PBS. Jam? And it's just, like, it's insane the taxpayer paid for this, because it's so upsetting. <laughs> Jam feels like it's from 10 years in the future now. Yeah, like, yeah. It's easily, like, 30 years ahead of its time. It's so fucking crazy. It's, yeah, Chris Morris, the guy who did it, he... He did like those two things. He did. He was like a radio guy. He directed the movie Four Lions, and then he'll just like completely disappear from the public eye for like years and years at a time. But he's like, he's one. He's one of my favorite comics ever. But but like UK stand up, with a couple exceptions, is horrible. Yeah. Really. Well, it's, yeah. not, it's not that it's horrible. It's just like like. Like, you look at the time, it just feels a little bit behind us. Like, Jimmy Carr, I think Jimmy Carr, like, says funny shit, but he's just doing, like, one-liners. They remind me of, like, mid-aughts, like, American one-liners, mm-hmm. you know? I I found out they have they have their own roast battle that he hosts. That's got to be fucking dreadful. I think I would like to, I'd like to watch it, at least. I, I, I like to watch, British people are actually so fucking good at insulting each other because the, it comes so naturally to them. Like, mm-hmm. their manner of speech is so casually mean. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I like, that's true. I wish that we had the panel show here. That yeah, is yeah, another yeah. great thing about British, con- are you familiar with this, Chris? Nope. I'm going to ask you to text me both of these things. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) I've never, like, sat down and watched a whole episode. I'll just watch clips. But they have, like, TV shows that are basically, I guess, podcasts. But it almost looks like Hollywood Squares, where they're, like, just a bunch of different comedians at desks, like, quipping back and forth. And they talk about kind of fucked up stuff, too. (laughs) They're just, like, they'll just be on. It'll be, like, primetime, and they're just, like, talking about, did Prince Andrew, like, rape young women? Like, they... (laughs) That sounds pretty great. Honestly, Dude. if you just have a long form conversation, it's yeah. great. British television, British public television's kind of fucking sick. I got like when I when I flipped out uh, the one night when I was on it, probably the last time I did acid. Uh, I mean, meaning it will be the last time I do acid ever. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched the Prince Andrew video five times, like got obsessed, like reading about Epstein. But then, as I was going down the rabbit hole of watching Prince Andrew interviews, I got really into this um, BBC journalist, and then I just started watching. Uh, preview the press, which is this like Sky News show where they just like preview the top headlines of like the newspapers coming out for the next week, and they have two people from different papers like discussing the political events of the day. And I got like addicted to watching this because they're having such like an in depth, thoughtful discussion about like current events. And these are all current events from 2015. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I was I was still like, holy shit! I feel like I'm really learning. Shit you just lived. I, I think it, there's like a Mark Twain story where like the big joke is that they're all debating uh, a newspaper from, like, months ago because one came through town. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's literally what it was like. I was like... <laughs> yeah, cause, cause, because they were talking about Corbin's chances. And I was like, so... Now I know a fuckload about Jeremy Corbin who probably will never be, like, a political player again. <laughs> So you went down an Epstein rabbit hole? Oh, I go? mean, I'm just, oh, we've been down. Dude, it. we've been down one. <laughs> yeah. Because I thought about the year anniversary is coming up. I thought about doing an episode on him. Chris, you should do it, dude. Mm-hmm. Have you? I thought, how, lady, how far, I how thought far? she'd be dead by now. Gillen, I mean, it's going to well, be. Well, that tells me that this is a sham. And then, like, 
Well, she's partially protected, and that's going to be her defense because of that um, original trial. Yes, that I I've, love this. Keep, it, go forever. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know that like the original like uh, deal that I've seen cut back when he was like he was sentenced, but he was still able to like go to work. He was basically like serving a sentence from home. Part of the deal what that he cut um, in that trial specifically was that he gave them a list of names of people who could never be implicated again, even if they were found like to be in connection to his alleged crimes. So like technically there, I think that they're going to try to claim like double jeopardy or something. Cause technically Gillen shouldn't even be like eligible to be tried for this shit because she was one of the people named. So was, um, does a plea deal. I mean, that is obviously crazy for many reasons, but does a plea deal still hold up if you're dead? Uh, yeah, because it held up in that mm -hmm. ca in that specific case, like that case where yeah. he was sentenced. All that shit. I don't think that'll water. play because you can't claim double jeopardy for something you've never been tried of. Or not double jeopardy. I'm using double jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's she's supposed to be uh, exonerated or exempt from from being accused of this or from from facing any legal mm -hmm. consequences for this. And I know that's what her defense is prepared. That's their main argument. Apparently, that's what the word is. Um. I, it's it's funny because like a bunch of shit like they're still like unsealing documents and shit which is implicating a lot of people but like it's they're not gonna arrest these people who are getting implicated like no. Prince Andrew fucking did that shit but we can't extradite him because he has like all these special privileges the 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 FBI can basically pressure him a lot and make him look really bad but ultimately they can't do anything yeah you can't arrest a royal <laughs> they're trying to get him to come over here voluntarily. Through like so, through like social pressure, and then once he comes over here voluntarily, if he says some whack shit in the interview, then they can arrest him while they have mm -hmm. him in a room. Maybe I don't even know. Like yeah. they might still be. They're gonna hard. check to see if he sweats and then shoot him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, but um, so I'll get off the Epstein thing in a minute. But it's we will not get off. <laughs> I I right. think. I think we're all down. We're gonna be on Epstein for a minute. Yeah, yeah it's dude. it's Gillan Wexner. Um, I think also. Uh, Dershow I think Dershowitz was one of the people who 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 isn't eligible to be like tried for the or like who was protected under this uh, agreement that he cut, but I might be wrong about that. Um, in Florida, yeah, I think Dershowitz was on that. Der yeah, I'm pretty sure Dershowitz was on it. It was a list of fucking like it was basically like a list of everybody who's definitely doing the shit that you think that they're doing. <laughs> and I, yeah, I'm all, I'm shocked she's alive too, man. But I I think the fact that she's alive means that the case either won't lead anywhere meaningful or something will happen to her eventually and if it does and nobody cares then we've moved into the territory of we're just going to full on start disappearing people and I, I do we're, we're inching closer and closer to china every day i swear to god the only difference between us and china is china is at least like upfront about the shit that they do I'm not saying that it's good china fucking sucks but like we as we are essentially doing all the same shit that they yeah. are well i think that um the reason she's not dead is because I think this is almost, it's like, all right, we need to have some sort of legal process so that you can then go back to, like, living public life. Uh, like, we need to put you in a courtroom and then let you leave. Yeah. For I'm, appearances. It, it, I mean, it's yeah, crazy because if you, I got you. if you know anything about the case, you know anything about Epstein, like, all all things point to Ghislaine Actually, and it's funny. She has friends coming out now who's saying that like she was a victim of him. But like mm -hmm. Jeffrey Epstein was the front for this shit, one hundred percent. It was Gwen's connections through her father, who was like an asset to multiple intelligence agencies. He owned the fucking. Did he own the Daily wow. Mail? He he owned he owned maybe the Telegraph. He owned a, a British newspaper. He was like a media mogul, and he was basically she, or through him she was jeffrey's bridge to like all the various socialites and that's why it's so chilling in that fucking prince andrew video where he's like the reason why i liked uh hanging out with epstein is because you would meet every fame every notable person in the world would be at his uh you know at, in basically in his um cadre so you're like okay so they're all fucking doing this shit 100 percent it is all real. <laughs> oh my god! I fucking hope not, but it's looking like I don't. Yeah, it's 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 frustrating because it's one of those things where like coming to terms with the enormity of it and just like the fact that like it's one of those uncomfortable truths that like you push aside because you're like that certainly can't be how the, the world can't run on the fuel of fucking like raped children like that like that that can't be what we're putting in the tank that runs shit. But it seems like it might it, be. It really it's, seems like that's it. <laughs> it seems like there's a handful of people who are into it, which is weird. Well, I yeah. think. I mean, sorry. This is going to be the last thing I'll say. <laughs> we've had we've had friends out here who have been at like weird fucking parties, seen weird shit, like 
it, it, it's happening on like multiple levels, like sometimes just weird sex shit that's secretive. But I also think it's like a real thing in American politics where like, you know, part of the way that you like pressure your opponents or like get fucking like legislation passed is like, I think that American politics is, is somewhat of a Mexican standoff of like child porn. Like you get these politicians in God. No, seriously. You get these politicians. <laughs> I'm, like, not, I'm not laughing at your idea. It's just, I didn't expect child porn. To be one guy misreads it and thinks that he can, I'm Spartacus it. He's like, <laughs> I'm a pedophile. <laughs> I, I, they, these, uh. like, like these guys get fucking dirt on each other in this way. If you look at like the Franklin cover up, there's a lot of instances of this that are not fringe that straight up like went, to fucking trial, it, 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 there, there's, there's too much smoke for there to not be fire. Oh, we're gonna find out, dude. We're, we're gonna find gonna out gonna UFOs, find out. and we're gonna find out that by Christmas, probably. Yeah, dude. how <laughs> fucking crazy is that gonna be? I mean, two big it's things. gonna somehow become like a social justice thing where it's like, oh, you're kink shaming billionaires now. Like that's what they like. <sighs> that's their identity. <laughs> they identify. <laughs> it, it, it is cool that we're living in the time where like, it's like there's been this like set perception of reality by humanity for like fucking hundreds of years, basically. And we are living through the time where I think it's, it might be upended in like the most substantial way. Like since the beginning, I mean like, I guess you could like argue like fucking the industrial revolution was big, but like knowing how much shit goes on behind the scenes, that's not transparent, whether it's extraterrestrial or the fucking global elite. We're, we're living in maybe one of the craziest times to be alive. I would agree with that. The interconnectivity of like, even if you just look at Twitter, it's like, yeah, you, I can lay it, I can see how many jokes out of nowhere. I'm talking to you guys in California. Like all this shit's bizarre. Like a dude from 1973 would be like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, dude, yeah. Man. Video, vi- video calls. It's still weird to me that it's real. You go back 30 years, talk to somebody in the 90s, tell them all the shit, tell them that like Elon Musk is like already trying to like get patents on this chip that he wants to put in your brain so that you can listen to music directly. Like that was on fucking Twitter today, like a Neuralink or whatever. Uh, he wants that. He wants that like by the end of the decade, probably. And it's just like this. Yeah, I have something else that I want to go straight through his brain. <laughs> 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 we, this shit is genuinely like unprecedented. And I think that there is this feeling in America, especially that like when people also talk about like getting back to like economic prosperity, I think that people, I don't know how we, th- this might just be how I think about time, but I think I think about time like kind of circularly where it's like eventually things will go back to normal and we'll be in a period of prosperity similar to like the forties through the mid seventies. Like that's what everybody wants to get back to. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's, we're going to have too many paradigm shifts with like technological advancements, like intelligence reveals, fucking extraterrestrials. Like I think that we're yearning for a sense of normalcy. That is never, we're never going to come close to again. Sorry. I'm so, I've been fucking <laughs> thinking about this shit, dude. Nick, it's coward hour. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> yeah, for no, I really doing enjoy this, dude. This is nice. Like these are <laughs> Like sick topics that I like talk about. Like, I never, yeah, I'm always just like, so anyway, the three musketeers were. <laughs> it's like, I know, I can listen to this dude talk about Epstein, he knows a shitload about it. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I even, even when I think about like the past, it's like you used to be able to bank on things staying about the same for your lifetime, basically. Like you wouldn't see that much new shit in the six years you were alive. Now, every like five years, mm-hmm. shit changes in a fundamental way. And I don't know if our brains are like equipped to handle it i mean even just the fact that like uh like smartphones are like a midpoint in my life like we didn't have them for half my life and now we have them and ever literally everything about life is different now yeah, have you ever seen the magnificent ambersons there's this really like cr- i'm sorry <laughs> do this <laughs> nick i stop apologizing right. for doing no, no, the that's podcast. the only thing you gotta stop doing is apologizing yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what you no, because it's, you it's just heavy it's heavy for me to uh i've never met well i've met chris before i just hope that i'm not like front loading this shit um but there's this really great scene that's on youtube where uh Joseph Cotton in the Magnificent Ambersons, the um the youngest Amberson son, he hates automobiles. He thinks they're representative of like you know basically like the degradation of society. Mm-hmm. Like they're like they're it's you're you're passing this threshold where things will never be there, which is kind of what smartphones are for us. Yeah, yeah. And um, Joseph- I mean, I'm on I'm on board. I'm I'm fucking the Unabomber putting uh sugar through the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or what did he do? What did he put through the the wood machine? Oh, I don't I don't know. Oh, he. I, I remember he put sand through like a sawmill 
that was like making noise near his house. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Yeah, that rules. <laughs> but but Joe, Joe Cotton has this line. He's an automobile manufacturer, and he sees how angry George Amberson is about like uh, the world changing. And he's like, look, I can't say whether or not automobiles are good or bad. They may not enrich men's souls at all, but automobiles are here. And it's it and something about that just like like <laughs> I think about that all the time. Every time I look at my smartphone. I think you're dead on balls, and also you explain that pretty great. Yeah, I don't think we <laughs> could ever go back. And cause also, they're like tracking devices. Like everybody knows everything about everything, but that yeah, net neutrality dude. thing, where it's just like I don't even understand how they're aggregating my data, and like my targeted ads are fucking perfect for like shit I said out loud to myself while I was listening to a song. Well, and then that fucking shows up. Like I said, Benny Hanna once, and I got four Benny Hanna ads. You know, there's a, a thing. There's a thing with 4K smart TVs now, where you enter into agreement when you buy them. That's why they actually sell them. Uh, for cheaper than they should be because they make money uh, selling the information that like if you have your smart TV on and it's recording you uh, fucking Vizio or whatever makes additional money selling your data to other like ad companies and other corporations. So like it's mm-hmm. like 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 uh, commerce is working on this weird fucking level that like it's ne- it's it's never worked like this before. We're like you are the product purchasing a product. Yeah, sometimes I turn my TV on and it updates its user agreement and that TV is like 8 years old. So I can't imagine what they're doing now. <laughs> Like when Vizio also- got sued, I found out because I turned my TV on and it told me like, hey, you <laughs> you all, you, America, sued us. Yeah. And we have to give you this website to go get your $14 check. Dude, I hate when I go to watch Mad Men and my TV apologizes to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, I think like... There have been a couple just, like, very cinematic dystopian things that have happened uh, to me that stick out in my memory, and that's one where I was just like, okay, my my TV is having me agree. It's yeah. making me agree. I, I've never directly interacted with my TV before, <laughs> but now my television and I have entered into an agreement. <laughs> There's that, and then, like, early in the pandemic, when I would drive around and see... Uh, billboards for movies that haven't been in theaters for months and i was like it's fucking i am legend yeah <laughs> but that also that would was, fuck me up and yeah. what's funny is that just happens in la because it's somebody's <laughs> job to take them down and they're just like i'm not fucking doing that I, there was there was a i remember when i moved here there was a um a bus station ad for the last harry potter movie and i was like wow somebody said fuck this <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah i guess that was also in south central yeah it was in, south central. <laughs> in burbank they're a little bit more on top of it <laughs> <laughs> No, just real quick. That that I've heard that as a uh, to backtrack a sec. I've heard the idea of like they're taking our data to for advertising, and that's a valuable commodity they're selling. Like that's an argument that I've heard. I don't know if it's good or bad for UBI, but the idea of like well, technically you're generating that content that they sell for money, and so that if it's like a snake eating its tail thing, which like I didn't really understand, but it sounded fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing yeah. I don't understand is like the data can't be worth the money that is going into this like because what do they do with it they then use it to sell you ads like the only possible way that (laughs) it's worth the money is if somehow the government is subsidizing it and then using it for nefarious purposes right it's purely for advertising advertising isn't that hard well i don't understand (laughs) to go back even further even when I was little, I don't understand like how advertising works. Like now they can target it, right? Which I mm-hmm. imagine they must love. But when they used to just like throw ads, like have you ever watched a commercial where you're like, it convinced me, I wanna, I want a Kenmore fucking cooler now. Like, um, I used to think that, but as I get older, advertising affects me more. Really, like noticeably. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not like I mean, I mean, I don't watch TV commercials or whatever, but like I've, I've gotten. Uh, trying to think yeah I've, I've definitely gotten uh suckered in by like a recommended item on like uh oh interesting yeah i don't know or like um but that's not but that's not i don't know that's I'm, not advertising I'm, though. yeah yeah i'm blanking 
Uh, but definitely, I mean, no one's immune to advertising. Otherwise, it wouldn't. Yeah, no, it fucks me up. I'll, I'll help you out. I, I, I don't trust my subconscious at all. I can't control it or anything. I know for a fact I've seen like booze ads and then been like, yeah, fuck you. And then like three hours later, like, so anyway, that would be kind of fun, so, you know? Uh, <laughs> and then I don't know where that came from, but it's really? like for sure that's because like four of them showed up. Interesting. Okay. And they just got buried in my brain. Yeah. yeah. I well, mean, it, it definitely works. Um, yeah. But I, I just I, I can't mean believe it's not, it works as much as they spend money on it. Well, I just I don't understand why they need all the data cuz you just like put someone on television and have them say drink Coca-Cola. Like I get I have a buddy who's in advertising and he said that it used to be great cuz he was um he was in like local advertising. So if they were selling if they were advertising for like a car dealership or something, then they would be able to y- like, I guess Facebook used to let, uh, they'd let advertisers be like, all right, we want to show our ad to men of this, uh, income level, uh, between these ages in these specific zip codes. And like even further down the line than that, like every single variable that Facebook can glean from you. Uh, and I guess they don't do that anymore because of, like, the Cambridge Analytica thing or something. But he said, it's like, yeah, you used to be able to just, like, be like, okay, who is exactly the target audience for this? Here's the product. Because now, I guess, like, advertising, you pay per, like, uh, the view instead of where it used to just be, like, we pay for a billboard. Right, or a time slot. Yeah, so I get that. But it's like, what the fuck is my TV getting from me? It's not like... It's not like it's then going to like play different commercials for me on TV. Well, no, no, I don't I think I think the point is they just sell they 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 are like uh harvesting data from you, mining data, and then they just sell it to like corporations that are disconnected from the uh, just like other ad agencies and, and it might affect you through a different avenue, but yeah, they're I guess still so. selling your data off. Yeah, but I I just don't understand why it's so valuable that they would do it. I mean, I'm sh- I'm sure that there's some reason that it is right, but it's like, what I think are you it's doing? Scary because I don't know it. Yeah, I don't you, know that reason. Are you just That's buying it all up me. and putting it somewhere? I don't know. I also when, know. And, uh, is it for the secret Chinese credit score thing that uh, well, NPR did the story on that? Like, we also like they do social credit in China, um, but like everybody knows about it. But we also do like we you have a credit score that's not tied to your actual credit score. You have like an additional credit score that is influenced by things that aren't even always purchases. Sometimes it's like uh, you like opening the app Uber Eats, and like this woman request. It's possible to request it. It's hard to do, and she requested it and got it. Couldn't make heads or tails of it. But it was like an 800 page PDF that just had a log of like, again, not even a purchase, just like every time she'd like visited a certain site and it had some oh kind of like, Dino- yeah, right. It's fucking crazy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 there is so much fucking weird shit going on. Oh man. Yeah. You just ask me. I don't give a fuck. I'll tell you ad agencies. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, dude. I mean, even credit scores are fucked as a former loan officer (laughs) like Mm -hmm. it is completely fucked i would have people argue with me and uh they'd be like well what doesn't my credit go down if you check it it's like yeah and they're like why i'm like no reason (laughs) yeah there's literally no reason it has to do that and then like if i pulled it like like once one time i had a guy because i i had to be like and is it a do you give me your permission to pull your credit and the guy was like yeah and then i hit the button because it's that quick and then he's like actually wait no and i'm like i apologize i i'm sorry i i already did it because you said yes and he's like oh well you gotta <laughs> undo it and i'm like there's literally no way to undo yeah, it yeah dude and uh i mean it's just it's like i get the purpose of it but it's just it's wild like the fact that you can only look at it yourself every so often and uh even like if you go on Experian and you check your score and you do like your free like annual hard inquiry without getting penalized, that's still going to be a different score than what we have because like lenders just calculate it differently and you're not allowed to know how. Dude, oh, I'm never going to be able to own a house. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't care. I'll just. I find- mean, 
by the time you or I would have owned a house, we're going to be able to just walk into one and claim it. Yeah, that'll be sick. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's going to be uh, <laughs> coast to coast Detroit. <laughs> I'm fucking. It's going to be the fucking war zone map. You just land and go in the house and look through <laughs> chests to see if there's anything that you want. It would be so funny to get denied for one of those like one dollar houses in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you ain't got. You're it. like, there's a dead <laughs> body in it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get one of those houses where, like, the front of it's being held up by the wooden boards. Have you ever seen those? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, like, bombed out buildings. They're like, yeah. yeah, we have to put scaffolding on it or else it'll fall on kids. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like the row home where the other home is gone. So it's just, like, <laughs> big diagonal be beams. <laughs> Wait, didn't houses blow up in Baltimore like yesterday? Yeah, uh, like three houses or some shit. There was a, it was because of a, a gas leak. And I think no fault of the family either. I think it was. I think just like the gas lines in Baltimore are shitty. Um, the mm. the the photos of it were fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. It looked like it got hit by a drone strike, dude. It was. Yeah. I remember seeing it. Yeah, Damn. it oh. it's it it was. Everyone was blowing up. I'm like, Chris. I'm I'm like a hundred percent off the news. And it's <laughs> it's so it's wild because like anytime someone mentions something to me, I'm like, what? Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, they, yeah, the three houses blew up in yeah. Baltimore. It actually, the only other time I've heard of like housing collapses is in like Philly, which we've had like three of them last yeah. like year or so. <laughs> just every now and then, a house will just fucking come on tumbling down like rampage the video game. Chris, <laughs> have you fucking... have you done an episode on the on Move? I don't know what Move is. The Move, move. bombing. I'm it was like th- old man. Oh, it was like three blocks from our house. It's it's uh when the like the National Guard dropped bombs on uh it was a black community it, yeah it was like um it was a black oh. nationalist group and the the cops fucking bombed their like row home <laughs> yeah i remember i know of this i don't know who told me about it but i think and i think i watched like half a thing and fell asleep which is pretty disrespectful for how fucked up it was <laughs> I, remember, <laughs> I mean it's like I a really famous that. event and i just remember like because i didn't know where exactly in philly it happened and i was just kind of biking around our neighborhood which i would soon learn not to do. And uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I just, I went down this one neighborhood and I'm like, wow, this place is fucked. Because <laughs> there were, there were like, in in that general area, there were like whole blocks where it's like, oh, there used to be a row home across the, row homes across the whole block and now there's two of yeah, them. You just turn a corner and it looks like the intro to Scooby-Doo. Everything's like blue and dark yeah. and fucking foggy. Or like it, it literally, it looked like a, it looked like if someone opened their mouth and they had two teeth, you'd be like, there's supposed to be more teeth in between. That was the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we lived on in that. We had like the street we were on was it was OK. We mm-hmm. had like a nice street. Remember the block general who did actually didn't yell at us for how fucking bad we were. It was all it was all families. And then like us. Mm-hmm. But well, then, I mean, yeah, there were some college like, kids across. I feel oh, like. Yeah, I mean, we were in like University City, so I feel like. uh I feel like we were less of a problem than like the the Drexel kids. Yeah, we were right on the edge though, like because we were thirty. What was it thirty three Mount Vernon or thirty four Mount Vernon? Because then there's that park, and then mm-hmm. I, that park was always it to me. Where like, all right, well if you go like up and over like towards the zoo, but you don't go over that bridge, like careful if you got to walk down. Because I remember there's a liquor store over there, and there was a couple of nights where I was like trudging, just being mm-hmm. like, all right, let's uh, let's be quick about this. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're imposing. Like I would, I would go around. I'd just be like, "Well, my best bet is hoping they think I'm a kid, so they don't mug." <laughs> I guess I've just like, be like, "Oh, well, children don't have money, so we're gonna let him go." <laughs> I have no sense of like how dangerous a city is. Like I can't tell you like that time when I had to like walk all the way home through downtown through East LA. Like it was like a two hour trip at like two a.m. Mm-hmm. Just like well, you have your you have your ethnic camouflage, on. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nick gets real tan in the summer. I get real fucking tan. I grow my little mustache oh, yeah. out. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm I'm just, I'm kind of just stealing Mexican valor, like from from the months of March to September. <laughs> I went through a quarantine phase where I grew a mustache and I thought about getting ripped and just like seeing if it uh, just coming out chola. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I guess I can say this on here because we kind of abandoned it. Um, but you know, like the, you know, like 
girl alt comic Twitter accounts that like blow up because like oh, they'll, they'll, I forgot about that. Yeah, like they'll they'll post thirst traps and then they'll get like forty thousand followers and then somehow get like a writing gig because they were hot or like whatever. And all their yep. tweets are just like complaining about like men. Um, me and some buddies started like a writer's room. And we just started running one of those accounts. <laughs> And we had to stop because it was like doing too well. It depressed us. Um, I bet you guys would have fucking crushed that. How yeah. high up you guys you get? got a job, dude. One of my, yeah, we should have <laughs> kept doing it. But uh, one of the tweets I wrote is I was like, uh, I was like, uh, boys will call you crazy for getting bangs after a breakup and then grow a mustache two weeks into quarantine. <laughs> and everyone's oh, like, yeah. Yeah, what they got. <laughs> 32,000 likes on that, dude. That's a good one. <laughs> no, we didn't get, we didn't, um, we didn't get that many followers, but what what made it insane is that like a a couple of the accounts that we were parodying followed us. <laughs> like oh, 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 they can't even wow. tell the difference. That probably you you probably felt like the walls were closing in a little bit. Then yeah, too. yeah. Like, <laughs> I, it was Black Klansman. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You infu- you like infiltrated Meerkat Manor. You, yeah, like, yeah. You look like the nice <laughs> in Meerkat Manor. <laughs> you, your little Gila monster, dude. You snuck in there. Like, yeah, small desert creatures. Hello, mm-hmm. Chris. You make so many references to shit that I have not thought about for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Gila Monsters and Meerkat Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, no, it's good. I was a, I wasn't shitting on you. That was, that mm-hmm. was it's, oh, okay. every time. Every time you you make an allusion to something on oral presentations, I, it's like I I get such a vivid like visceral rush of like oh yeah I forgot about that. <laughs> and it's funny that you haven't stopped thinking about it. I think it's like what makes me laugh so hard that it's like still a point of reference. I, I can promise you it gets old if you're around me. The Diablo, you, the, the Diablo two skill tree. I wish that that was how my teachers had taught me in like fourth grade. <laughs> was through the Diablo uh-huh. two skill tree. I freaked that lady out. That lady that corporate, <laughs> I was in a shop and the lady from corporate headquarters came to ask everybody how they like their job, and I was like, "Okay, hold on, sit down." So I'm a fucking necromancer, and here's what I'm learning. Here's what. Okay, so welding is this, and then body works over here. I fucking. And at, at the end, she was like, "Okay, so you like your job?" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Oh man, that sucks when you accidentally um, let your mask slip at in like a professional setting. <sighs> And I meant it so hard too. I was like, I'm gonna. I bet she's gonna like this, dude. I really right. do like this. I hope she likes it too. And then she was just unimpressed and moved on. Well, you're showing her your enthusiasm. <laughs> you're like making it your own. You're like, I'm gonna really convey like how much this means to me by like, mm-hmm. yeah, dude. Yeah. Women like love a real when you. I had too. Yeah. <laughs> Women love when you relate uh, everyday concepts to gaming. <laughs> yeah. They and famous- she was like sixty. Like, <laughs> fucking, the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I um I I make my girlfriend uh very exhausted because literally everything I compare to some there's any kind of situation I find myself in I can compare to some episode of The Sopranos <laughs> <laughs> and yep. I I will never stop. <laughs> yeah, you get that ping of like you gotta like you gotta regulate your reference wheelhouse. Like you're like, all right, I can't hit that page on the Rolodex again anytime soon. Too much Sopranos. <laughs> Except I never have that self awareness. <laughs> um, our our friend Robbie, who uh, we ha- we have on here a lot, uh, we we have this running joke where like uh, we can make any movie about open mics, any movie or TV show. <laughs> So it's just like, oh man, uh, <laughs> like I, I was watching Amadeus and I was like, this one's easy. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's very funny. I fucking, uh, I don't know. I was in a weird place and I, I wrote a little bit of a script about called strange magic about druids in the 1400s. And about <laughs> open mics. I <laughs> want to read this. <laughs> I'm it's sorry. only like it was like I don't know eight pages, nine pages, mm-hmm. or whatever. But like it was just patterned because druids used to fucking tell the weather by throwing sticks, and so but they would do it publicly, so everybody would show up when the druids would come down from the north and tell the weather or whatever and throw mm-hmm. sticks. Oh, so like yeah. that's a type of being on stage. So I was just like, all right, we'll just overlay the open mic story you know from like 2015, 2016, 2017 on druids, and it would work. So you're not alone with that shit. Yo, I fucking <laughs> watched that dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> listening to a lot of ELO. I was like, dude, mm-hmm. Strange Magic is a great song. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> six days late. Like I'm embarrassed to tell you about that. That sucks. No, no, that's <laughs> fucking, dude. That's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I, I, I love. Uh, <laughs> I love how your your comedy just like embraces weirdness. Like one of my favorite bits of yours is the one where you're in like the Dunkin' Donuts trying to reassure the bullied child that like one day everyone <laughs> will celebrate his differences. <laughs> yeah, dude. I couldn't help him. I couldn't help him. <laughs> this is fucking mean. That and I I you don't have to do it, but are we <laughs> Would you explain to Nick your your uh, giraffe bit? Uh, evolutionary current. Yeah, yeah, the e- evolutionary. Oh, current. I think I might even heard you do this. Yeah, it rings. A oh, okay, bell. I I remember talking to Brandon Jackson about that bit because we both loved it so much, and we're like, that bit should not work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so wordy. It yeah. sucks. It's it's like two minutes of setup, and like the first <laughs> example is literally just an example, like an overhead. Mm-hmm. And then there's silence, and then I got to go into like giraffe, rhino, platypus, <laughs> but it's because so it's good. an endless bit. Like you can just take crowd, fucking lobster, <laughs> you can do all of them. <laughs> sorry, I'm being vague. No, oh, it's man. all right. <laughs> if, comedy might not be illegal, and you don't want to burn it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was so, like one of the last bits I did too, right before, because I think Preston put a show on. And I did it. Uh, I was like really fucking around with it too. It was really fun. Thanks for bringing that up. I like that one, but it is strange. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I, that was a. I I think I did a different one than Nick was on, but I remember. Uh, I think it was just it was it was a time where like I was in the house and you just like found me in my room and you were like, "Come on, we're going to a show." And I'm like, am I on the show? And you're like, Ugh. like <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> like didn't even answer the question. You, I, you just showed up. And you're just like, yeah, this is Crick. Put him on. Just like Sean <laughs> Preston. Oh, nice, dude. I didn't know where I was. I was like, yeah, dude. I hope I know how this ends. Where it's like, why would you ask me? Like in my head, I'm like, yeah, I would just get a roommate and be like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Anybody in that house? Because I wasn't, it, so I like, wasn't used doing? to having let's clout go. where I could just like drop in places. <laughs> that was like, then that there was like a brief time in Philly where I did, and then it like dissipated. <laughs> yeah. But I was just like, oh, you just show up and they put you on? Wow. That was why doing my, like, my last year of Comedy in Maryland was so fun. Because mm-hmm. I could just do that. Yeah, yeah. And it was pff, fucking yanked the minute I got to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it if it's any consolation, it's probably not even there anymore. Because like... Uh, oh, yeah. Definitely not. Like, Raven fell apart because like you can't... You can't... Uh, put people up in the order that a crowd wouldn't enjoy them anymore or you'll get in trouble. Right, right, right. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. How's, do you old, still, oh, what were you going to say? What? No, I'll ask you, I was going to say old Raven fucking ruled though. When like, you just get told to your face, you suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like when I, when I started fucking Chris God was like, you're not going to the first half cause you're bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You show up, you watch five hours of open mic comedy and then you go up at like one forty. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time we uh we drove up me and a bunch of my Lancaster buddies. We waited all night. We all went up like the last 5 in a row. And uh my buddy Ryan me and um he was waiting to go up and and uh Keen the host he goes up and he's like Richard Mann and my buddy Ryan is looking around like, is that me? And Keen's just fucked up, and he's like, fuck you, Richard, man. You had your chance, and, like, moved on in the world. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, I love that, though. That was yeah. nice. But, man, I mean, uh, you know, what are you going to do? But I was lucky yeah. to come up like that, I feel like, because it's like, yeah, dude, I didn't go you back had to, to really want it two it. years. Yeah, and you had to, like, you, you had to work because like I would drive up to Philly like once a week so I would have to spend the week like working and writing so that I could get laughs so that I could go up earlier so that I could drive home and get four hours of sleep instead of three before I went to the ant poison factory to work (laughs) (laughs) and you were risking a bomb too like you'd still have to do that like you're getting like if it went bad Mm -hmm. oh that was a rough drive from Philly to Lancaster if you bombed 
<laughs> Sometimes I would like not even play music. I would just drive and think about how. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn, dude. That's the worst. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had a host gig like that in Scranton when I was like brand new. Somebody somebody told me they were going to give me a spot in Scranton, and I didn't know them at all, but I was like, fuck yeah, that's like showbiz, and here we go. And I got to a bar show, and they were like, hey, you, you can't do a spot. You have to host. And like I was like so new, like less than a year, and mm-hmm. it was just a, like a clam bar, and I fucking bombed the whole time. And then the guy was like, all right, we're getting a hotel room. You got to give me like $150. <laughs> oh like, fuck! <laughs> I was like, nah, I don't, I don't have it. It was snowing. It was like December, so I was driving, and I was driving a Dodge Stratus at the time, which sucked in the snow. <laughs> so it was just, I was in the snow cat from The Shining, fucking t- asking myself what I'm doing. Oh my road. fucking like, god, dude! I hope I go off the mountain. I don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> just, that was the <laughs> fifty dollars yeah. at the rest stop. Just bomb. <laughs> I think I once I got trapped in the snow because of comedy too. I like um or no, it wasn't the snow. I I I uh I fucked up my tire and it was like 3 in the morning so my parents weren't answering the landline. Oh my god. Oh no. So I just like went in I I walked to a sheets and I was just like, "Hey man, if I buy enough stuff, will you let me just like hang out?" And it's just like this teen. He's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, I like, so I got myself a nice MTO meal, and then I just like laid down on the floor oh and went, waited, <laughs> waited for my parents to wake up so they would come get me. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> this was <Yeah>. pre Uber. <laughs> Yeah, pre Uber, your yeah. car's fucked. All right, f- all right. Well, lay, lay down at sheets. Mm-hmm. You got <laughs> yeah. like four hours, yeah. and your Dude, dad's gonna buy be a bag and of chips and make yourself a pillow. I remember this is when <laughs> I still had a flip phone. It was, uh, it was, it was like the night of my birthday. I was fucking, um, I was doing stand up because I wasn't doing anything my thing with my friends, and I, I used to drive this really, really shitty like uh, ninety eight Civic, and and the tires were basically like completely bald, no treads on them whatsoever, and I'm fucking driving into DC like on fifty like. Right before the main entrance, and my ti- I have so many stories in my life about my tires exploding while I'm driving. <laughs> Three different cars. This is fucking happening. So this is the first time it happened to me. One of my tires just full on explodes, and I'm like on the highway. So I like I'm like fucking maneuvering like 12 miles an hour, trying to like get all the way over to the what to the right so that I can get off at of this exit in Southeast DC, like one of the worst parts of DC. <laughs> they explode like someone shot them. Yeah. Yeah, that was what happened with the CRV too. I saw my tire go sailing. I heard a bang. I saw my tire go sailing by my driver's window. <laughs> so, so not it. Like not even in the top five funniest things that happened to that car. Yeah, no, oh, not even fucking close. So, so I'm so I'm fucking driving into the worst part of Washington D.C. Like on this shitty fucking like I I'm I think I drove that car on three tires, one grinding against the pavement oh, for f- probably like six or seven miles <laughs> just, to like, just to like get it away from like the flow of traffic. Oh man, if, they, if there are any dads listening, they are like <laughs> stomping their yeah, feet, yeah, yeah, screaming. Yeah. <laughs> and my fo- I had a flip phone. My flip phone didn't, I didn't have a charger in the car that phone worked with. So I, my flip phone was dead because it couldn't hold a charge. So I'm just like in... Oh fucking dc uh no way to fit like no way to call my parents no nothing so the only bar that i knew was the bar where they hosted jackpot the open mic so i took what was like it wound up taking like an hour and a half all told getting to this bar in chinatown in dc just because i knew the guy there i was like hey man i usually do the mic here can i charge my phone <laughs> and so i like <laughs> I had just turned 21 too, so like, so I, like, it, like, and I, I, I don't even know if I had my new license yet either. But I, but I think you could still see the fucking thing. So I was it's like, it was the first time I was allowed to be there, basically without mm-hmm. him like cutting me a favor. And so he charged my phone. It took my phone fucking like 30 minutes to charge, and then I was finally able to call a friend because my like I didn't want to tell my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have a donut in the car because I think it already used it. So I just <laughs> fucking <laughs> I, cra- I crashed with another comic that I knew in DC. Like once mm-hmm. I got a hold of him on the phone, and then the next morning, um, the next morning I got the tire fixed by taking it to some fucking used, and they put a tire that like an equally fucked up tire. It was like a twenty dollar tire <laughs> just so I could get home. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> i've done that shit before where like because the thing about cars is people are always trying to scam you 
Yeah. Uh, but then I've I've taken it too far where I'm like, oh yeah, I need my oil changed. You're not fooling me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, you, oh, you all of a sudden become a mechanic. Like, yeah, yeah I've been yeah. arrested before, and then it, you become a lawyer out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I fucking know. And it's like, nah, you fucked yourself. This is the worst, you get the worst possible outcome now. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I, had a, I, I, I mean, people say that, but I really, I feel in my core that I could represent myself. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah. I mean, given enough time, maybe, but... I would be interesting to look up who's pulled that off. Like how high a level crack cuz it's always serious. Oh, there's a and everybody's like, "Okay, you ate that lady. Shut up." <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a movie about it um called Find Me Guilty about this. I'm pretty sure it's a true story. Find Me Guilty about this mobster who defended himself in court and it's a Sydney Lumet film. It's really fucking good and the guy is played by Vin Diesel in like maybe his best performance ever. Huh. Find Me Guilty. It's a, I'm pretty sure it's a true story of a mobster who defended himself in court. And it's it's <laughs> fucking good. It's it's a good Vin Diesel movie. I'm gonna need like a reading list after this. Yeah, I mean, I'll, should we cover the British comics? I'm gonna need, and I'm gonna need that. I mean, all this to text to me. I mean, this is great. Yeah, dude, I'll send you. I'll send you. Find me guilty. The the last thing I was gonna say about my car is um the second car that I, second to last car I had before the uh, CRV was it had a fucked up rack and pinion, so it was just leaking oil. There was no way for it to not leak oil, <laughs> and it was it was leaking oil at a faster rate than like I basically I had to change the oil. It on, was a Brita filter, like essentially. Oh. <laughs> I had to change the oil on the fly every time I was driving somewhere. So, like, every time I would park, I would have to pop the hood and fucking oh change God. the oil. <laughs> I, so, I just had these, I had these fucking just, like, just uh, fucking containers of oil in my trunk. Like, just, like, line the fuck up for every time I drove somewhere. <laughs> I ruined you drive now? Oil is What do you cheap? drive now? I don't, I don't, you have, like, a Bugatti. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't drive anymore. I, I, yeah. I get around L.A. using right. just public transportation it, it, and walking. He, he let, um... He let spiders retake his car. He, yeah. He parked it on... <laughs> he parked it so long, like, <laughs> non-running, that, uh, like, it was covered in spider webs. Yeah, dude, one day it was, it was just... It, I showed up and it was gone, like the Lorax. It just returned to nature. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good car. I lived in that. I mean, it was kind of good because like I had I had like lived in that. That car was bad memories. I had like lived in it. Mm -hmm. I had, like I still had, I had the seats down from when I would like sleep in it down at the uh, at the base of the Culver City Overlook or whatever, like the mm -hmm. Baldwin Hills. And it's like there was like I had like spilled a little piss in it from pissing in the bottles and shit. So it was yep. just that that car needed to that car needed to go. <laughs> I needed that car to go to move on with my life. <laughs> I hear you on that. <laughs> It'd be funny if that was in like the Carfax report. Like you go to sell it. Yeah. They're like, I see here you pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I see here you spilled oh piss. God, yeah, dude. piss was dribbled in the car. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. My fucking car. My car. My car right now. I need to figure out how to get a new car. I cut the interior carpet out because it all fucking stunk. There's, there's oh, yeah. damage on every piece. Like it's just you, yeah, Crick's been in it. I mean, I was yeah. in it. I was in it four years ago and it sucked. I can't imagine what it's like. Now. It was so bad. I gave Voss a ride from Helium to his hotel for Ooh. like Ooh. For like three blocks. So Voss gets in and he immediately starts taking his phone out and he's like, I gotta tape this. <laughs> like, I gotta put it on Instagram. Like it's so shitty, dude. And so I, Weren't you I blew like a yellow a... light to like get to his hotel before he could figure his phone out? <laughs> Were you were you like uh you were brushing your teeth in the car and then like spitting it on the ground? Yeah, I've like I've done that. learning good habits, honestly. <laughs> Can I share something uh really funny that you said? I'm I'm not sure. Uh it's about the I car. Mean, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I remember you were talking about how like uh I guess your dad co signed it, is that right? And, yeah, he and goes on alone. He was like coming after you about the money and you <laughs> Uh, what's your dad's name again? You you always refer to him by his name. Oh, dude, I still call him Jim. Jim, man. yeah. And <laughs> you were talking to like me and six or somebody, and you're you're like, listen, Jim. Sometimes you go into business with the wrong people. You gotta eat it. <laughs> If you need any proof of what a piece of shit I was in 2016, fucking that sucks. Dude, your dad co-signed your car, and you're like, I'm teaching you a lesson. 
Dude, do you have? Is there? That'll probably explain why. Like, he still doesn't believe that anybody listens to my podcast. Right? He's like, yeah, okay, son. Fucking all right. You can't show him the numbers. It doesn't matter. He's like, okay, mm-hmm. nice. That's fine. You've you've said so many like things so funny that they're just like in my memory forever. Some of oh, which, I like, for- I don't even remember what the setup for it was. I just have, like, oh, a stray Chris Wood punchline in my brain. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> envious of, like, what, like, you clearly, I don't know if it's from trauma or what, but a lot of your neural pathways are, like, very set. Like, you can just, like, <laughs> just the connections you make, it's like, okay, his his brain works like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling in small doses, some people like it, but I'm telling you, if we hung out a lot, you'd be like, all right, I need a fucking break, buddy. <laughs> but thank you guys it's yeah. fucking nice of you. damn i forgot i fucking said that to my man. It's so funny like, so funny. like all the, like gordon gecko like all right you know what dude? <laughs> sometimes you buy For real ghost. estate in haiti and there's an earthquake <laughs> yeah. shouldn't have co-signed this honda fit <laughs> now i'm gonna go get drunk in this house again with a bunch of fucking 29 year olds click <laughs> Fuck, that's so fucking God, funny. that house was so shitty. Oh, man. I moved in and immediately hung honestly. a deer head on the wall. Oh, that was so fun. You remember, Mc- I remember when we first moved in, McCusker hung sconces perfectly. Mm-hmm. He was like doing carpentry in the bottom. I was like, oh, man, I'm impressed with all this. <laughs> yeah, they were my sconces. He saw me <laughs> hanging it, and just like his contractor instincts took over, oh, and he, he was like, no, you're not doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> He did a great job, dude. He the did deer a- head was in the middle. That was a lovely downstairs. Yeah, he did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know before I left that house, this is embarrassing. So I was like, uh, I tried, I fucking had a hole in my wall. And so before I left it, I tried to patch it and not tell anybody. <laughs> but I didn't know how to mix body filler. So it was like an automotive body filler to be able to patch the wall and then just spray paint it. Mm-hmm. whatever so you're supposed to mix body filler with hardener it's like a compound that you mix on a thing and then you put it on and then it dries and then you sand it down i didn't know to put hardener in it so this was auto paint you were using on the wall no it's uh it's body filler it's like oh, okay uh, uh and but you have to put hardener in it or else it will never solidify and mm-hmm. so i went to go fix that so i put a bunch of like these grids that you stick on on that hole and then just put a bunch of body filler on it with no hardener and then waited like six hours and it never dried <laughs> <laughs> so like, so like, 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 had to find it and be like, "What the fuck is this?" And like, he had to like scoop it out and fix it for real. And I, I just learned about that maybe like two years ago. And I had to basically be like, "Dude, I fucked up. I'm sorry." <laughs> he was like, "The room probably still smells like paint. Honestly, it probably smells. It still stinks." Oh my yeah. fucking god. You know our toilet seat still in that house? Really? That, like holographic? Yeah. Do uh, comics live there still? No, it's a real family now. But oh. they have a eagle, wolf holographic toilet seat, <laughs> and they will never remove it. Yeah, I remember that was the one thing I was so psyched to move in that house. I spent like I don't know, it was like one hundred and forty bucks from Texas. It was like an un- I had like one unemployment check left, and I was like, I gotta bring this to the house. These dudes rule. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. Yeah. I remember I moved in. It was the only, like, I had never lived in a house w- that was, I, w- I had never lived in a city. So the idea that I could do something in my house that someone else could hear was inconceivable to me. So I, I move in, it's like midnight, and I just start hammering walls, <laughs> like hammering nails oh into the God, walls. Oh, dude. <laughs> McCusker comes, he's like, Crick, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because he because he was like a grown man at the time. Yeah, he, he had adult. just gotten he, divorced, so he he went from like he had been completely trained on how to be a husband, and then he moved in with a bunch of animals. Yeah. Oh my god. I would love to get him on here. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I I feel like him and Nick it would be. Oh, I, I, dude, I want to meet I want to meet McCusker Sorry. so bad. He's so I, fucking funny. I I like, dude. When I listen to him, I feel like I've known him my whole life. <laughs> like, like yeah, not to not to do like it, i guess it is like, kind of like sleepless in seattle actually <laughs> dude i fucked up so bad one time i was like uh in the kitchen with him i don't think anybody else was home it was just me and him in the daytime and he was like cooking some sort of like actually well prepared with spices meal that was going well and then uh he was like do you smell that i think there's a gas leak in here and i was like yeah i think there's a gas leak too but really i just like had a thing of bj's chicken that was like 
three months old in the fridge. <laughs> and so we fucking called Pico on a, on a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, he found the chicken and was like, smell this. Does it smell bad to you? And I was like... No, I think it's all right. I just, didn't, I, just didn't, I just didn't want to admit it. And then eventually I had to be like, I'm sorry, man. That, we, I, I did have chicken, so we probably had a gas leak. No, I'm going to eat that right now. I'm going to cook it. <laughs> yeah, just take it out and bite it. It's like beef jerky. You can eat it like jerky. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like dry-aged beef. Dude, that's the fucking that's the house I'm in right now. We have a black liquid leaking out of our fridge that I can't even use because it's so fucking full. Like I'm just gonna buy them. In. Like I walked into that house the first day. That we live with our old roommate. I live with our old roommate Isaac in this house that like was a known like comic house out here. But um, t- like dude, I like I remember like the first day. Like there's I I see spiders on every single wall in the house, and I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna get these out. He's like, no, don't get rid of the spiders. I'm like, why? He's like, because they eat the other bugs. <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. fuck okay uh and yeah, so and yeah. so our fridge there's literally this black li- i mean it, it feels like a cursed object from like the conjuring or something because there's a black <laughs> liquid this is just constantly <laughs> leaking out of it and uh nobody seems to want to clean it like i started i tried to i like mm. tried to clean the house the first day i was like scrubbing the floors sweeping and like people just kind of like walked by and were like huh <laughs> and I'm like, all right, yeah. so this is, yep. this oh, is going I, uh, a boulder up a hill. When I when I left the house with Chris and moved to South Philly to be closer to work, and I, I moved in with LeMaire and um, Keen, the guy I mentioned, <laughs> from Raven. And, like, my first night there, I'm like, I'm going to do something nice, and I'm going to clean the bathroom for everybody. And I, like, I'm cleaning this toilet, and I cannot describe to you how bombed out this toilet was. It was yeah, horrible. Dude. And like the yeah, shower, right. like I was like, oh the shower is like um I thought the tile was red. <laughs> it wasn't. It was like, oh my god. It was horrible. Yeah, dude, there's a we have a we have got this 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 there's black liquid all over our house actually. Like it's really weird. There's this black viscous liquid under the hand soap uh, in the, in the second bathroom in our house. Mm-hmm. And I like, oh it smell like it smells worse than human shit. I don't know what it is. I'm afraid <laughs> to touch it. Like, like, <laughs> like I, like I, there's so many like volatile unknown, like it's, it's like living in Chernobyl basically where you're like, will this burn my skin? <laughs> <laughs> Hideo Kojima ass house. Yeah. It's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we would play fucking trash Jenga and then we would just play chicken with each other to see like who would take it out. Like we would have a <laughs> pile of trash by the fridge. It's like the size of a, like a five foot, like five foot, five and a half foot man. Oh my and God. We just be like, is anybody taking it out? No. Just take another week. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I kind of, I kind of miss that kind of like early twenties, or I guess whenever you're doing the like yeah. shitty dude house, where like somewhere in the house there's a tower of twenty five pizza boxes <laughs> that are recent. Oh yeah, dude. I, the, when when Sean Preston lived out here, my maybe my most prosperous era in L.A. When Sean Preston was living in the kitchen of mm-hmm. the of the South Central House, and it would just be pizza boxes and box fans like stacked up. You would like it was like a beautiful white noise. It would lull you to sleep at night. Just this, <laughs> just this tower of box fans that we had out in the front. <laughs> it was sick. It was- it was it was so like there were so many like obviously everybody didn't like except for McCosker I'm I mean I certainly didn't know how to live at all but like there was also like real warm tender moments where like I remember I got crick to hit a sledgehammer in the back once oh like, yeah I used to I had like a big tire and I would hit it with a sledgehammer for a workout and I remember one day I was Holy just like shit. I'm gonna make a friend. I bet he'd love this, dude. Honestly, I bet he would love it. <laughs> like, but it's just like you don't know how to make a friend, so like you're just going all the way from like, well, you could just go get something to eat. It's like, no, nah, hit a sledgehammer for a long time. It's not how you make friends, dude. Yeah, I. It's weird looking back on it, where like we both wanted to be each other's friends, but we were both so mentally ill that every like, yeah. every olive branch came across as like an aggressive <laughs> declaration. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh there's uh i watched a thing on Reese's monkeys where there's like three types of Reese's monkeys socially mm-hmm. where like there's gregarious Reese's monkeys <laughs> that are just down to chill with everybody and then there's like isolation East Reese's monkey which are like no oh, fuck off i'm alone and then mm-hmm. there's something called arm's length Reese's monkeys and they just don't know how to make friends but they really want to be friends <laughs> so they'll get within an arm's length of each other or like another monkey, which is like the danger zone, because that monkey will fuck you up. So you're taking the risk of making friendship, but then they'll just be like, 
<laughs> fucking run away because they don't know how to make friends and like for the long, i feel like that's a lot of that house where i'm like i'm trying like ah, I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry i feel like part of that could be like uh like who else was in the house like i feel i i could see like uh something going well and then shane just popping his head and being like what are you guys making friends we're like no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really like and then i would get jazzed that like he popped in i'm like oh another one yeah you come and do that <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I'm, I'm happy it happened, but I'm happy it's over. Also, where it's like, all yeah, right, yeah. that's a chapter. Fuck mm-hmm. it. Let's learn some things. Yeah, Fuck. yeah. Bunch of detail, bunch of stray details to mention offhandedly to Bay and horrify her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and show her how much you have grown. Where it's mm-hmm. like, I used to be this way. What a man I am. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's so well, every, like your room still looks like shit and you're like eh, I'm learning every time I mention to my every time I like mention to my girlfriend like about like like you know the shitty houses I've lived in or like being homeless she's like wow she's like you've lived such a life and I'm like no no I was doing the opposite of that I was I, I was living way less than a life I, w- I was a wa- I was walking death <laughs> yeah, I was literally I was on the river sticks like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was like the people I went to high school with were like had a home and were on their second kid. And yeah, I was like I'm living with these four dudes. This is fucking great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're all gonna do open mics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's uh, it's getting laid out by me. You yeah. Guys oh yeah, yeah. I, say, I gotta bounce that soon too. Yeah, we're almost at two hours fifteen. So thanks. This was a great episode. Fuck. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. This was awesome. Hey, uh, yeah. Let's let's do some plugs real quick before we let you go. Uh, listen to oral presentations. Uh, it's Thanks. great. Uh, you have a Patreon for it, right? Yeah, I do. I do uh, one public uh, week, and then uh, I'll, I'll at least do one Patreon a week. But uh, I've been doing like three. I, I don't know. Uh, it's look, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to pressure you. But if you if mm-hmm. you like the show, that that'd be nice. It's know? a but it's a it's a great show. Yeah. It's a really good podcast. Really dude. funny. It feels like um. Like, cause I kind of got burnt out on comedian podcasts, so I started just listening to like NPR type, like like educational and culture podcasts, and it it feels like that, but really retarded, and I love it. It's like my favorite thing. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> That's our demo, man. That's yeah. what you know. You try to attract people who are like you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Are you dumb as shit, but curious sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great show. All right, thanks, Chris. Great, great talking to you. Even severed from the podcast. Yeah. If you if you want, the pandemic keeps going for another two months or whatever, and we do this again. Let oh, me hell yeah, we'd love to me. have you back. And I, I'm gonna, to. I'm gonna, we should try to hang out when I make it back out to the East Coast. I would love to chill yeah. with you, dude. Yeah, whenever we're mm-hmm. close. Oh, yeah, uh, man. Yeah. All right, this is getting weird now. It's just like <laughs> nice. All right, <laughs> thank you guys. All, All right, right, buddy. See ya. I'll see you, boy. Knock, knock, open up, it's me, the crazy, shady, faded fucker, so rock the G's. I see a lady, make a baby, lead her on in peace. Only time I give a fuck is for my own release. That's why I own these streets. Straight up, portfolio, showing growth, fuck a pay cut. Yeah, you know I stay slut. Catch me in the spot, lubing up for the self-suck. Oh, fuck, I busted already. I'm coming bucket so heavy. My dream of cream coming steady. Now my mouth open, I'm ready. I'm talking solo heavy petting on a Friday night.